Hello everyone, my name's Kat and I teach art. Some of you might know me and some of you might not have met me yet, so I look forward to meeting you when we all come back to school. Today we're going to do some cutting with scissors. Now the first thing you need to know about using scissors is that the way that you carry them is very important. If you carry them like this, so that the blade is in, the, ha in your, the palm of your hand and your thumb is covering the blade and you just hold it like a lollipop, like this, then it means that if you fall over with a pair of scissors in your hand, you're not going to hurt yourself because your blade is all wrapped up in your hand. Now we've got to know how to hold our scissors when we're cutting. So usually when we're cutting, we're sitting on our bottoms on chairs and we're keeping quite still. We make sure that there's nothing nearby that we're going to accidentally cut into, like a tablecloth or your clothes. If you're right-handed, and means you, that means you write with your right hand, or draw with your right hand, then you need some right-handed scissors. These are the ones we use in school. If you are left-handed and draw um, and write with your left hand, then you need left-handed scissors. It's very important to get that right because the blades inside are at a different angle. So those people who are left-handed that cut with right-handed scissors, poor you, you must get really frustrated. So let's find out how we hold our scissors. We use our first three, our first two fingers and our thumb, okay? And these, what, these two are going to be closed like that. And if you hold your hand like that, you'll notice that this here hurts, hurts a little bit. And this bit here is also, you can feel it kind of working hard. So when you're first learning how to cut, it might be that the muscles and tendons in your hand here need a little bit more strength. So the only way you're gonna get that is by practicing lots and lots of cutting. Our thumb goes in the top, like that. And our third, our, this finger, our, our tall finger, goes in the bottom loop, which means that this Peter Pointer finger here will just curve around the edge of that one. So that means that the thumb is at the top, and the and the tall finger is at the bottom. My two fingers here, my ring finger and my little finger, are curved into my hand. Now I know that some some children find it quite tricky to do that. It's quite easy to have, poke your fingers out like that. So what we need to do is put a little bit of a tissue, or a little of a cotton ball, or something like that and just hold it there so that, and don't let go, okay? And that will help you, if you squeeze that tissue, that will help your fingers to learn um, to curl under. Are we ready? Now, if you're new to cutting and you're not very familiar with scissors at all, that's fine, because we're gonna practice. Now, you could take a piece of paper and draw three lines. The first line, is a curvy line. The second line is a lovely, tall, straight line. And the next line is like crocodile teeth with big zigzag shapes. Now, I wonder if you can use your scissors in the position that I've just shown you to cut on the line. Give it a go. So you'll find when you're cutting, you can, to cut on the line, you can move your paper. You don't always have to, you don't always have to move your hand. Sometimes you can move your paper so that your blade always stays on that line. And as you cut, just try and make sure that the blade is on the line. Went a bit out there. Now, the next one is a lovely straight line. I think I can manage that one. 
And then the third one is the zigzag. Now, you could cut your zigzag by moving the paper like that and then turning it around like that. But you can get a little bit mixed up. So when I'm cutting zigzaggy shapes at the edge of a paper, I always come in from the edge like that. Snip and then take it here and snip again. And that, that should just come away. Okay. We're going to make this gorgeous snowflake design. We take a piece of coloured A4 paper and we take the top corner and fold it so that one, that top edge meets the left side edge. We hold it with one hand and then with the other hand we really press that fold down. Now I'm using a pen here to go along the edge of the line and I'm going to cut off the extra bit of paper turning that A4 rectangle shape into a square. Let's fold it in half to make a triangle. And now I'm going to fold it in half again, making sure that the corners meet. And I'm going to fold it again, making sure that the, that the corners of the triangle meet. And I'm really pressing down with my fingers on those edges. Now it's scissor time. So I'm snipping some straight lines into the, um, into the paper here. I'm making triangle shapes. But I'm making sure that I don't cut all the way along the folded line because otherwise it would just fall to pieces. Sometimes I'm turning the paper when I cut and sometimes I'm moving the scissors. I'm going to make sh cutting shapes all around the outside of the paper. Let's open it up. What do we get? Lovely. Now, I'm going to stick mine on a piece of green paper. I've got my glue stick and I'm just gluing on the back, just dabbing gently some glue on the edges. Gently put in place, just with the ends of your fingers, just tap it in place and then turn it over and give it a good rub. Putting lots of pressure on that paper. And hey presto, it's stuck. Now I'm using a marker to draw around the outside. And I'm going to snip, making sure that my scissor blades cut on the line. I'm going to use a marker to just add a little bit of detail to go around the edges of, of the orange paper. But I've got to make sure that it's symmetrical. So it creates a mirror image. You don't have to put, do this, but I just like it. So here's our completed design, all done.